Hi there, I'm Jennifer with Sublimely Align and today's whole body alignment teaser is the squat. And the squat is a great way to build appropriate hamstring and glute strength, which is really critical to not only your um, hip health, but pelvic floor health and low back health. So today we're going to talk about organic opportunities that you can weave throughout the day in your daily activities that you already have a squat alignment potential. Those are things like sitting in a chair, um, picking something off a table or the floor, or even putting on your shoes, which is more of a single leg squat, so definitely more advanced. But these are all opportunities that you may notice uh, occur throughout the day, and they're opportunities for you to build hamstring and glute strength. Also, um, once you kind of get that down pat, I like to recommend that you add sort of two or three repetitions throughout the day, sprinkled throughout the day. Um, so we're going to just dive right into the squat. I'm going to give some really specific parameters. So whenever you're moving, you're using some muscle, um, and there are different benefits from different movements, but we're really going to try and target the posterior musculature here. So there's going to be some really specific uh, cues that we're talking about. We're not going to go really deep. It's important that you find those muscles without doing a deep squat and then you can always progress by making it deeper or doing other things and I'll give you a couple of ideas. So we're going to start with the feet wider than pelvis width apart and that is so that if you do progress to a full squat that you have a place for the pelvis. So we're going to start like that. Your other stance principles are in place. So if you're not sure what those are, you can uh, check out the video, get the most of standing around. But you want, essentially you want your weight over the heels and the outside edges of your feet lined up. The legs are straight. And the pelvis is neutral to the spine. So a lot of things going on here. Um, now, what you want to start by looking at is that the knees are tracking over the ankles. So when you sit back, the knees stay over the ankles, like this, as versus traveling inward. So I'm going to exaggerate it. It's not usually this bad, but often there's a little bit of medial movement from the knee. And you really want to try and use that little hip strength to keep the knees tracking over your ankles. Um, the second parameter is that you want your lower leg or your shank to be vertical to the ground. So I'll, I'm going to show you first what often people squat look like, um, or one type of squat anyways, is doing this. So you can see as I bend my knees, my knees track over my toes, or they travel forward in space a little bit. And it's ideal if you can do this in front of a mirror so you can see where your knees are, but, but you can um, see if you're doing this, if you can't see your toes as number one. But you can also feel this because uh, you'll feel more work in the quadriceps, or you may even feel compression in the knee. So we're going to try and keep the shank vertical and feel like you're sitting the pelvis way back in space. So the knees are going to stay over the ankles. And then we'll press up to a straight leg and your stance. So pelvis is over, the weight of the pelvis is over the heels. So again, as you sit back, what I like to cue is that you're trying to reach with the pelvis for a chair that's way back in space as you bend your knees. And because your pelvis is way back, your trunk has to come forward to counterbalance. So if you feel like you're falling backwards, you may not be bringing the trunk forward in space enough. The trunk, as I mentioned first uh, in the beginning, just really quickly, you're trying to keep the spine neutral and you're trying to keep the pelvis neutral to the spine. I know that's a lot of things to kind of think about, but if you sit back in space and you feel a lot of tension through the low back, you may be extending the back. So you want to try and keep it neutral. Um, in terms of starting, don't go quite as low, but as you come back in space, you want to just maybe fold forward at the hips a little bit more. Have the ASIS come forward towards the ground. See if you can find the hamstrings and glutes. And then press up to straight leg, pelvis over the ankles. So what I see a lot of times is that people will press up and keep a small or slight knee flexion, knee bend essentially. And you really want to try and pattern away from this. The reason is you want the hamstrings to have their optimal length, which is when the leg is straight. And you can check this by lifting and lowering your kneecaps to make sure you're not hyperextended. 
but if you always come up to a, a small knee flexion, these muscles don't get the opportunity to go to their full or optimal length. And a muscle can't be optimally strong unless it is at its optimal length. So you really want to try and pattern a straight leg. The other thing I see um, happening sometimes is that people come up to a straight leg, but they travel the pelvis forward in space. And this can happen if this is your habitual stance. Um, so if you tend to stand with the pelvis forward in space, then you'll probably do this in your squat. And the downside of this position is a number of things, um, including bone density of the femurs or the hips, including um, back compression but also it diminishes the ability for the hamstrings and glutes to work. So you really want to back the pelvis up so the weight is over the heels and try and come up to this position. Now as you squat back and you get comfortable with this, you can go a little bit lower. And sometimes you can do this by just opening a door and holding on to the handle either side of the door. You can also transfer the weight to one foot to get a little more work in one side. And of course, if you do this, make sure you do it to the other side. You can lift the ball, uh, the heel off the ground and get more of the single leg squat feeling. And of course, I'm not in the right position here, but you can progress to an actual single leg squat when you have the strength um, and have followed your stepwise approach. So be sure to add some of these into your day and uh, enjoy. Let me know how it goes.